Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum. This is my guide, Raf's guide to Umrah in 2023 from my personal experience. Uh, so this is not a video about how to perform Umrah. I'm going to leave that to the scholars and the sheikhs. I don't think I'm an expert at that. But this is going to be everything else surrounding that. Uh, the logistics, things to pack, places to visit. So yeah, let's get started. And just for some context, uh, I'm traveling with uh, with an Umrah group uh, led by Ustad Asim Khan. So I'm not going to be just performing Umrah. I'm actually this is actually a work trip as well. I'm creating content for them. I'll be giving my opinion on whether you should be traveling as a group or traveling solo. So I'll share some of that insights as well. Okay. So first things first, and this actually applies to both groups of people that want to perform Umrah or Hajj. You want to download the Nusuk app. The Nusuk app is a new portal for uh, pilgrims. You want to download this and uh, create a profile, obviously, as soon as you've uh, got your visa because it requires your visa number. So I forgot to mention the most important thing, and that is first applying for a visa. It's a little complicated these days because there are two visa options now. One is a tourist visa and one is an Umrah visa. The tourist visa lasts for up to one year and it's multiple entry with a maximum stay of 90 days. You can perform Umrah and do your tourism and you can visit anywhere in the country. For the sisters, you do not require a mehram with this visa and you can apply for the visa online. The Umrah visa, on the other hand, lasts only 90 days and it is single entry. Obviously, you can perform your Umrah with this and you can even do tourism starting this year. So there are no restrictions for that. However, for the sisters, you must have a mehram and you can't apply for the visa online. It must be applied through an agent or through the embassy. It costs around uh, 230 Canadian dollars and the tourist visa is actually cheaper than that. So the only benefit of the Umrah visa is you can actually bring back some some water. You can actually purchase a five liter bottle for around uh, uh, eight or nine Saudi rials from the airport and take that with you. You can't do that with a tourist visa. So you can see how the tourist visa is actually a better bang for your buck. As far as Zamzam is concerned, you can actually fill up regular water bottles with Zamzam, tape it up, sneak it in your luggage. And if anyone asks at the airport if you have any liquids, pretend you have no idea what they're talking about. We actually landed in Medina, and this is actually a pretty convenient place to land, especially if you're traveling from the west, because then uh, you don't have to worry about getting into the state of Iran mid-flight. You can actually land in Medina, uh, visit Masjid al Nabi. You don't have to worry about anything. And then after you're done everything, uh, checked out Medina, then you can head to the Miqat at Dhul Halifa, I believe. Dhul Halifa is a Miqat. So that part of the trip, the actual Umrah part, is the second half of this video. So I'll make chapters. And if you're visiting Makkah first, then just skip there and revisit this chapter. But for now, I just want to give you more information about Masjid al Nabi and uh, regarding the Nusuk app as well. So with the Nusuk app, you actually want to book a time slot in Medina to visit the, the Rauda or Riyadhul Jannah, as people call it, because it's a part of paradise. Because here the guards actually check the day and time you booked off on the app. And you cannot finesse your way through. I know this because I've tried and I got kicked out. So what happened was I actually messed up uh, the timings. It was 3.30 that I booked off. And I assumed for some reason that it was 3.30 p.m., but it was in uh, is in a 24 hour format. Know exactly what your time slots are. Go there like an hour or two early. Even if you show the guard uh, your time slot, you have to wait like an hour, hour 30 minutes. And the thing is, you cannot rebook again until 30 days later. So a lot of the people that are visiting like us who don't live here, they don't have that luxury of rebooking it. So you only have one shot and make sure you know what your time slots are. Okay, so let me actually show you guys where the actual places are and where you have to go to visit the Roda. It's actually in front of gate 37, as you can see in the video. When you when you see gate 37, you, you can already see there's a bunch of people lining up, so just join the line. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see, but that's gate number four. And if you walk right there, that's where you can actually enter um, to visit the sacred tomb of the Prophet Muhammad So the path is open before prayer times and after prayer times and then you have to walk all around it. I'll show you guys in a bit. But that's where the entrance is. So as you can see, there's like uh, this pathway that people walk uh, to gate number one. And there's barriers here as well just because there's a lot of people. And the best time to visit this place is at odd times depending if the entrance is open or not. So yeah, people walking from there enter into this gate, gate number one. And once you're in Medina, obviously you want to spend as much time as possible in Masjid al-Nabi. But 
there's other places you want to check out. One of the best places to check out while you're here is literally right across me. It's right across gate number five. It's the it's the International Museum of the Prophet's uh, biography and Islamic civilization. Okay. So yeah, you want to check out that museum? It's I think like 40 riyals, and you can buy the tickets online. I, I recommend to buy the tickets online because you don't want to wait in line in the heat. You can book a tour, and the tours are offered in English or do French. It just takes you on a journey of the biography of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the museum is really cool, by the way. It's very like scientific, very techno with black tiles and like cool lights. And right beside that museum is actually an exhibition of um, the expansion of Masjid al Nabi. That's 15 riyals. It's not too long, but it really shows what the masjid was at the time of the Prophet and how it came to be this massive, massive uh, and amazing piece of architecture. So check those out as well. And then if you have more time, you want to go on a ziyarat tour, if you're alone, then you can just catch any cab and just tell them ziyarat and they'll take you around the tour of the most historical and important uh, masajid and locations. Some of them include Masjid al Quba, which is the first masjid built under the banner of Islam. So this is our first stop of the Ziyarat in Medina. This is uh, Masjid al Quba. There's a lot of benefits and virtues of uh, visiting this masjid and praying two rakat. It is said that just praying two rakat is the equivalent of performing an umrah. So you definitely want to come out here. Uh, as you can see, it's super crowded, super crowded. And it's what, like 9 a.m.? Beautiful masjid, I'm not gonna lie. I think our next stop is uh, the Mount Uhud. So we're gonna go there and I'll, uh, yeah. Come along. So we're at our second stop of the Ziyarat of Medina and this is Mount Uhud. This is where people are hiking up and people actually think that it's just this mountain that's called Uhud. It's actually this whole mountain range that's called Mount Uhud. This is where the Battle of Uhud took place, obviously. And a lot of uh, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, passed away here. They're martyred. So, yeah, come here, reflect, make dua at the graveyard. And if you want, you can climb all the way up that I'm going to do right now. So, yeah, let's go, inshallah. There's Masjid Saba, like seven mosques that have a lot of history. And if you have time, then you want to visit uh, Badr as well. So there's a lot of places to visit. So in, inshallah, maximize your time here. And okay, I want to check out my hair one last time. Oh my God, it's actually really bad. Yeah, I'm going to miss uh, having this hair. And... Um, So I kind of teleported from Medina to Makkah there for transition purposes. But the best way for you, especially if you're traveling solo, is to use the high-speed Haramain railway system. The travel time is literally cut to half compared to a car. With a car, it takes at least four hours. But with this bullet train, it's literally two hours or under. As a solo person, the cost is also cheaper. I paid like around 300 riyals for business class tickets, which is around $100. Economy tickets are only slightly cheaper, so I recommend getting uh, business class. And this pricing is literally the day before. So if you plan it out and book in advance, you will find even better pricing. Whereas a cab would cost at least 550 riyals one way. Okay, so your boy caught like a massive L today. I was trying to be smart and uh, book my tickets in advance. But just for you guys, I wanted to show you guys the train because I never travel in the train. I don't want to vlog this experience. I booked economy. On the way there and on the way back, I'll get business class so I have both experiences. And now, uh, I woke up late and I rushed. I left my hotel by like uh, 9.45 and my, <laughs> my train was departing at 10 a.m. So, you can already see where this was going. I make it five minutes before, uh, before it hits 10 and I'm like, bro, I need to go on this train. And they're like, nah, the, the gates are closed, you can't go anymore. So I'm like, screw it, I'll catch the next train. 
there's no economy in the next train not to buy business class unfortunately I'm not, this is not flex i have to pay like another 600 real because there's no refund on the previous ticket so yeah this is all for you guys and now i'm gonna milk um this business class um uh, ticket i have all the food here but yeah this cheesecake is banging for sure all right so since we have time to kill I'm gonna go show you guys around uh, the train station. I'm gonna show you the business lounge, what it has to offer. So yeah, let's get to it. So once you arrive at the Haram in Makkah for your Umrah, you'll quickly realize how confusing everything is. But thankfully, I've caught all the elves, so you don't have to. There are only specific gates open for Muharrim, aka people in Ihram who are performing Umrah. These gates lead straight to the Mataf where the Kaaba is located. If you aren't in the state of Ihram, you're not allowed on the ground floor of the Kaaba. You should have your Umrah reservation in the Nusuk app just in case, but usually the guards just let you through if they can see you are in Ihram. You want to head straight to gate 79 or around that area because it keeps changing to do your Umrah. So yeah, be prepared for lots of walking in Makkah. And by lots, I mean a lot. For Friday prayers, you want to be in the Masjid by no later than 10 a.m. Obviously, the earlier the better, but if you're late, you're going to have to sit in the scorching heat outside. Trust me, I know. Been there, done that. Okay, so for the ziyarat in Makkah, there are a couple of significant spots you want to check out. There are the Hajj sites, where all the huts for Hajj pilgrims are located. You want to check those out, drive by there just to get an idea. Maybe it even inspires you to do your Hajj. There's Arafat, where Hajj pilgrims also have to visit. Then there's Jabal Thor. This mountain is where the cave is located where the Prophet ﷺ took refuge in with Abu Bakr anhu from the Quraysh during their migration to Medina. It is the same cave where the spider built a web at the entrance to deceive the Quraysh. Then there's Jabal Nur, where the famous Ghari Hira is located. This is the cave where the Prophet first received a revelation from the angel Jibra'il ﷺ. So yeah, it is a very important and significant uh, place and you wanna, I'd recommend climb up there, check out the views there. Also, if you have more time, you wanna visit the city of Taif. There are some spots where the Prophet visited and they're actually marked. There's Masjid al or uh, otherwise known as uh, Elbow Mosque. And there's a spot near there where the Prophet made the famous Dua'i Taif, which used to be a garden back in those days. While you're in Taif, you also wanna hop on the cable car there because the views are immaculate okay so let's talk about what to pack you want to get some sunscreen i think i'm stating the obvious here but sunscreen is a must because with all the direct contact with the sun there you need some protection now this is a special type of sunscreen because it is actually fragrance free and as you know or you should know that you can't apply any fragrance while being in the state of ihram so get fragrance free products just to be safe i even got this um, fragrance free body wash because I was not sure if uh, the body wash provided by the hotels were fragrance free or not. Next, it's a pair of shades. Trust me, those white tiles in the haram during the daytime are literally blinding. Even with these on, I was actually like squinting. So imagine like without them. So yeah, this, this is a must. Next is this fanny pack. Now, this will be life-saving while performing Umrah. This is to keep your wallet, phones, or any personal belongings on you safe since uh, your ihram doesn't have any pockets. You can even wear a backpack if you like, but I'd wear facing the other way so the pockets are like on your chest area just because there is a danger of pickpocketing. Yes, even in the most sacred of places, these instances do occur unfortunately, so please be cautious at all times. Someone from our group actually did get pickpocketed, so yeah. Please be aware of your surroundings at all times. Also, this is extra, but this is like this tiny pouch to keep your shoes or slippers while you're in the masjid. You don't need this. You can grab any plastic bag to keep your slippers in just so it's easier to carry in the masjid or even keep by your side because there is a chance that someone else might accidentally grab them. Last but not the least, with all this info that I provided, should you travel by yourself or should you travel with a group? In my opinion, um, if you're doing your Umrah for the first time 
or if you're uh, going solo, then you should especially travel with a group. But not just any group, there are specific groups that take scholars to lead the group. And that is really beneficial because you learn so much more about your deen and your umrah becomes much more than just uh, going through certain steps. Now I'm not saying this because my trip was sponsored uh, by an umrah group. I went with Abada tours and I know all the hustle the staff members did because I was part of the staff. They were literally hustling for the smallest of tasks just to make pilgrims feel comfortable so they can focus on their umrah and their ibadah. So yeah, try to go as a group if you can. You'll make new friends. You will gain a better understanding and appreciation for your deen like I have. As far as costs are concerned, and if you really have a tight budget, do a comparison yourself. Compare if you were to go by yourself and how much that would cost. Compare that to the price of the uh, packages that these groups offer. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that you will find that uh, traveling with a group uh, will be the same cost, if not cheaper, because you will not find the same pricing for flights and accommodation if you book by yourself, because these groups get amazing deals. The only issue is that these groups have specific dates and if those dates align with yours, then perfect, go with them. But if it doesn't, then inshallah, go by yourself, try to gain some knowledge uh, by yourself beforehand just to maximize your experience. And I think that's pretty much it. If you found this video to be beneficial, share this with your friends and family who are making their intentions to go and perform their umrahs. And may Allah accept their umrahs and your umrah for those that are watching for themselves i'll have more vlogs from saudi coming soon inshallah so stay tuned for that subscribe for those and i'll catch you in the next one inshallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh